please also like. Thank you! Hello there everyone, Tom here again, and today we have the privilege of taking a look at Cliff Jumper from the Earthrise trilogy, uh, War for Cybertron trilogy. Uh, he is a deluxe class figure, so here, oh, excuse me, here is the top of the box, the, or the front of the box, top of the box, bottom, side, the side, and the back. Apparently he transforms in 18 moves. I do not own another cliff jumper, so this is going to be, I guess, the one I have until I finally break down and buy a uh, masterpiece one of some kind. So having said that, why don't we get this fella out of the packaging and we'll go from there. Man, these little pieces go everywhere. So in his box, he's got one of those little decoder, red decoder thingies. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that. It's there. Just be mindful. Man, there's so many of these little plastic tree limbs. Okay. So, let me just adjust El Camrato. There he is out of the packaging. He comes with this thing. He comes with teal blue instructions so yeah apparently his weapon comes apart in three pieces speaking of his weapon this is it right here it is I don't know it's just a weapon uh, it's measuring in about just a little shy of four inches, just a little bit. Let's see, it comes apart, so there's that part right there. Black with some silver paint. Nice use of the silver paint. Then we get the middle piece here, which is just silver painted over nice molding. Then we get this, which is... Uh, I guess the rest of the gun? Huh. This thing apparently opens up. So there's always that. Alright. So let's take us a look here at the figure. As you can see right off the top, uh, he's got some really nice blue eyes right there. Uh, his faceplate is painted silver. This is translucent blue. Uh, yeah, he's got a little bit of paint here, here, and here. Looks like Hasbro put the paint in the weapon in the front right there. Uh, that's painted, or at least it looks like it's painted. Alright, so coming out of the box, Cliff Jumper stands right about four inches high, shoulder to shoulder. We're looking at about eh, two and a quarter. Depth wise, boy, he got some big old feet. Let's see here. I'd say he's looking in at about two and an eighth to two and a quarter. He's a little bitty feller. Uh, he's he's not he's not all that big at all. You'll see with scale comparisons. Articulation: the head is on feels like a ball joint, but yeah, you get a little bit of wiggle waggle. Can it go all the way around? Not happily, but it can. The little bit down, little bit up, again, little bit of confused dog. The shoulders are on some type of disc hinge, so you can definitely go wee all the way around, I hope. Yep, bicep rotation is built into this mushroom peg that you can see right there. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. There's mushroom peg right there. Elbow, single hinge, 90 degrees. Wrist can go all the way around. It must be on a mushroom peg. 
no ab crunch but again the way we used to do it was we just bend him at the hip and you know he has 180 degrees of rotation on the waist hips are universals so he can do like that and he's got an insane rocker so that's as far as he can go flat footed thigh uh, thigh rotation is built around the mushroom peg right here so yes he does indeed have it single jointed knee actually that's not a bad looking knee look at that the way it works is actually not that bad so it's a little less than 90 we already saw the insane rocker uh, I'm not really getting that much up and down I'm not really getting anything up and down actually so I'll check on that to see if he has it later if not, then I'm not sure. What I'm not sure about is why doesn't he have an Autobot symbol? Huh. I thought Cliff Jumper was supposed to have an Autobot symbol. Hmm. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and do scale comparisons and then we'll jump into transformation. So transforming old cliff jumper here is not that difficult. And before anybody says anything, yes, I added a sticker there. There. Um, don't fuss at me. I know there's one underneath here, but you know what? We live and learn. I don't really care at this moment. So uh, first thing we do is we take off the shield here. And yes, he can hold his shield without any trouble. In case I haven't shown it already, yes, he can hold his weapon. Although. To be fair, in its combined mode, it is considerably larger than, you know, what he really needs. Also, I don't know if I noticed or told you all, but his elbow can bend backwards all the way too. So, yay for bending backwards elbows. All right, let's uh, get started here. Let's open this up. We lift this up, and that's a different Autobot symbol than what I have, but you know what? I don't care. I think it'll be just fine. So, let's see here, uh, rotate the waist, open these up. These have little pins here that go in between the spokes. This is really, actually rather ingenious, the way that they've done this. Uh, my kudos to Hasbro for that. So we open this up. Let's see here, these need to come down. And... This needs to come down, this comes around, and let's see, where's the clip here? It's right here. There is, I don't know if y'all can see it, right here there are holes that these little pegs right here go into. So you gotta make sure your arms are relatively straight like that. Bring them around until that lines up. And you just kind of work with them until they go to their home. So line it up and push it into place. Line it up and push it into place. Just like that. Mine don't always want to stay together. I'm sure it's a individual results will vary thing. This comes up, bring down your wheels so that they go in the wheel wells. These come up, and your doors peg into place. There's a peg right here for that. Bring this up, bring your doors in, like that. Squeeze together, squeeze together push it all together so that it all works 
Make sure your doors are where they're supposed to be. Like that. And once you got all this like this, bring this in, bring this down. And this is a pain to get back up. I had to use my spudger, so just be mindful. These little pegs here will go in the hands to help solidify everything. And this is Cliff Jumper in his vehicle mode. He's measuring in at just under four inches. Uh, I don't know, uh, seven eighths. Height wise, we're looking at about an inch and hmm, three eighths. Width wise, the widest points probably here are these back tires. But that's going for right about an uh, inch and a half, let's call it. All right, so it's actually longer. The gun's actually longer. It will plug in up here. Alibet not very happily. Maybe if we take these off. Like that. Maybe it'll plug in a little bit better. If you want that look going, you can do that. Yeah. It does roll. Not too bad. Let's see. We'll do scale comparisons here in a minute. Let's separate the gun. And I'll show you. They did that thing from that one show... Hasbro is now doing that, where, I don't know, I guess it's a standard thing where you have to have a, a cliff jumper, have a water ski mode, I don't know. Was that uh, Five Faces, no, it wasn't Five Faces of Doom, what was the name of that movie? Uh, the, the one where they, uh, you know, they water ski, I, I can see the, I can see them doing it. Ultimate Doom. That was it. It was Ultimate Doom. This opens up. Now, this comes in and there are little pins right there that'll go in little divots right there. And my suggestion would be try to get them both to go in at once. Otherwise, your life will not be very happy. And then there is a port right there. That peg goes in. Now we got that going on. This right here comes in some way. How does this thing work? I mean, they pin in right here, but I thought that that... No. There's a divot right here goes in right there. That's it. See? I can eventually get there. Sometimes it takes me a while to, to circle the wagons, but, you know, we can protect the wagon train. All right. And that's what he looks like in water ski mode. This thing's just foolish. Uh, I'm sorry. If you love it, you love it. But I don't. Uh, it's a full two inches and a quarter. For those of you who are curious. Uh, does it raise him up any? Uh, inch and a half now. Okay. So, yeah. Let's do scale comparison in this mode. So I really don't mind that right there. Or that. I mean, I guess I could take that one off, but I don't really care. I really don't care. All right, let's do scale comparison. Final thoughts wise, uh, you know I look at three things, playability, materials, and cost. And Nemesis, what the hell are you doing with that weapon? I've upgraded. This is my cameo. I get to do whatever I want in my cameo. Ah! No! No! It's mine! It's mine! Ah! Quit touching me! Quit touching me! This doesn't belong to you.
I stole Optimus's gun. I can steal cliff jumpers. Besides, you didn't u even use me for a scale comparison. Oh, look at that, Nemesis. He's bigger than you. And he's got a bigger gun. Oh, are you feeling inferior? Shut up! Damn it! This is why I hate Autobots. I thought you hated Autobots because you were a clone of Optimus. Shut up! Ah! Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, playability of this figure... Actually, it's okay. It's not so bad. Uh, it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. And it does just fine. He's bigger than a Legend scale figure, so... Uh, I mean, you just saw him with Nemesis, and there he is with, you know, Iron Factory Starscream, so... Remember, he's supposed to be a deluxe, not a legend scale. They're almost, almost eye to eye. I do kind of have a problem with that, but regardless, uh, the playability's fine. The materials, actually, for a Hasbro product, this thing feels really good. It's don't don't get me wrong. There's no die cast. It doesn't feel heavy, but it's got some decent paint on it here and there. Uh, aside from the lack of the Autobot symbol, which really bothered me. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's the materials here feel fine. At least as good as Hasbro's done in recent years. They're nowhere near as good as their classics line, but yeah, you know, it, it's not bad. The cost I pay I got this one on sale for nineteen dollars at Walmart. It was eighteen ninety and change. So yeah, uh, somebody I heard somebody say that they think that they're evening out. Uh, you know, you you paid more for this one, but you get more for I don't know Ironhide or something, which I'm actually kind of okay with. So yeah, let me see here. Oh, excuse me. I just wanted to see. Yeah, yeah, just, again, scale. Yeah, uh, should you buy it? I didn't have a cliff jumper, so, you know what? He might just be my stand-in on my masterpiece shelf. Uh, not because he's masterpiece quality, but that way I'll have a representation for him, if nothing else. Yeah, I, he's fine. He's, he's nothing that's going to change your life drastically, but he's just fine for what he is. So, if you like the character, buy him. By all means, buy him. This is Tom. Thanks for watching. And I will see you at the next review. Oh, uh, but real quick before I leave, just so you know, my Wheeljack Custom is coming along just fine. We should be seeing him relatively soon. Bye now. Get the hell off the screen. Shut up, Nemesis. Thank you for watching my Papa's channel. Please subscribe and like. Thank you. It's just so hard, Doctor. After three million years, I suppose it's normal, but... Yes, go on. But the tailpipe emissions, they've become so bad, he's not allowed to transform in the house. Hmm... This is a pretty common issue with bots in their mid-three millions. Fortunately, there is a remedy. What is it, Doctor? I'll pay any price. Why, Vitaminogen. Is your partner complaining about your emissions? Do you backfire with no warning? Do your friends avoid you with stupid excuses you know are fake? Then try Vitamin John today. Try our three-week starter pack, guaranteed to rid you of your emission problems or your money back. What do you have to lose except your stinky emissions? It's amazing, Doctor. He's like a young bot of two million. And we owe it all to Vitamanajon. Yippee! Wow. Vitamin John, operators are standing by. Go now!